Kings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles and also Canada Revenue Agents. Thank you for tuning in to my Commander Legends very tax deductible opening. Now to make sure we have everything in order guys, I, this, is, this video is here to teach you how to be MTG finance guru slash god. So right here, People from Canada Revenue Agency, if you're from America, that's like the IRS, okay? People from the Canada Revenue Agency, I have purchased this box as a business expense. I have the, the documentation here to prove that this purchase is 100% legitimate. Now, my friends, to maximize return, though, here's what we gotta do. We're gonna, we're just, out, we're, we're opening one pack. That's it, okay? We gotta get 12 videos out of this. That's how you make the money, because I'm gonna get a dollar in advertising revenue from each, from each video. I, I, I don't know how this is gonna work out in my favor. I really don't, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna level with you. I didn't have enough time today to do the video I wanted to do today. And so I figured, you know what? Let's, let's go tax. Oh, you know what? I forgot. One of the key things for this to work for you guys, like if you wanna use this as a money saving measure and be all tax deductible like me, all you have to do is just build up your own YouTube channel with thousands and thousands of people watching it. And then you too can tax deduct some magic booster packs. Isn't that exciting? All right, so now to make this official and definitely not any kind of like non-official trying to do anything not right with the tax scenario, let's open this booster pack. There, I, I have it on record, okay. Now let's take a look at the magical cards that are contained within and see if we can do it without vibrating the table and chair and everything around too much. I feel like when I do these openings, the stuff's bouncing all over the place. And I do have a fix for that. I am going to improve these opening videos, but not today. All right, so we got cage of hands, one white and two for an enchantment that is literally a cage of hands. Look at that. I mean, okay, look, wait, wait a minute. Look at what is this hand pointing at? Um, uh, <laughs> this, all right, you know what? Let's read what the card does instead of uh, that artwork. I never noticed that before. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. One white and one return cage of hand to its owner's hand. So it's <laughs> handy, handy. It's getting real handy. So this is an all right card. I mean, it's cool. It, this, these are supposed to be the commies from Kamigawa and they're holding you down. But again, what are you pointing at? Let's move on. Let's move on, naughty boy. All right, then we've got Goblin Trailblazer. Hey, how, what are the, uh, now they do still have that fade. The, the foils from this have a bit of a fade. Goblin Trailblazer. One red and one for a two one with Menace. The flavor text says, why are we following the Goblin? Can he even read that map? That's fun. And then you got like a little Goblin hacking his way through the forest. Follow me. I would follow this dude. Look at that helmet. That's a trustworthy helmet. All right, what do we got after that? Maelstrom Colossus, eight mana for a seven, seven artifact golem, and it's got cascade. So when you cast it, you get to basically flip over cards from the top of your deck until you had a spell that costs less and play that one for free as well. Not too shabby. Nothing of the Maelstrom is quiet or easy. Sounds like my life. All right. The artwork's pretty cool though. The artwork is pretty cool. You got a golem with the magical energy blasting up out of him. This is definitely an excellent tax deductible opening. All right, we got Seraph of Dawn. All right, the Dawn of me paying less taxes. Oh yeah, this is a 100% legitimate opening. Two white and two for a two four flyer with lifelink. She parts the clouds so sunlight can reach even the darkest layers and duskiest tombs. I'd let her part my clouds. I mean, maybe not with that sword. I take it back. All right, the artwork shows the angel flying triumphantly up into the sky with the sword. Why are you flying? Like, what are you threatening God with your sword? You're supposed to help him. What are you doing? Either way, you've got the sun and it's like blasting, making her sword all illuminated. Looks pretty dope, actually. After that, we got workshop assistant. Three mana for a one, two construct, weird little bug thing. Sometimes the smallest things make the biggest difference. Yeah, save it for the ladies. This is the flavor text I expect. Some dudes are trying to break out at the bar. It's like, hey, did you ever consider that sometimes the smallest things make the biggest difference? Look, buddy, I'm not drunk enough. All right. <laughs> so you got this little bug here, and I guess he brings you your tools. That's kind of fun. The idea of having these like little assistants, bring me my weird energy blamper. Okay, here's your energy blamper, boss. Uh, it's an underwhelming card, though. Wait, it's got to, wait a minute. The ability says when when assistant dies, return another target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. 
Uh, so that's a really crappy assistant. Get me that tool. Okay, self-destruct sequence initiated. Wait, no, just get me the tool. Who designed this? Oh, Lore Seeker Stone. Now that is an attractive card. Six mana for an artifact, three and tap. Uh, three and tap it, draw three cards. This ability costs one more to activate for each card in your hand. So if your hand's empty, this thing's gross. The flavor text says, mages come from far and wide to bathe in its wisdom. Completely understandable. If being around this stone fills an empty mind with wisdom, that's a powerful artifact indeed. And the artwork's awesome, man. You've got like the gemstone kind of like floating here on this, like what looks like energy, although I guess there might be something actually driven up through it. And you've got all these pillars around it with a half stone henji kind of vibe. Very mystical. Then, oh, return to dust. Two white and two for an instant. Exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target artifact or enchantment. Really solid card. Getting to remove two artifacts or enchantments straight from the game is really solid. The artwork is a win because you can literally see a sword being turned to dust. Good luck rebuilding that sword. You know what I mean? Like normally if an artifact gets destroyed, oh, maybe the sword got snapped in half or something. But in this case, it's being broken down to its particle elements. And we've got a foil extended border version of it. That is not a shabby pull. All right, very tax deductible. Moving on, we've got Kreskit the Flesh Sculptor. One black and two for a 1-3 legendary human artificer. Tap it, sacrifice three other artifacts and or creatures. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Perfection is elusive. Let us try again. So the idea is you're kind of like scrying into the future with his ability, but the, the flavor concept is supposed to be the idea of Phyrexian perfection, where he keeps making newly modified beings, but none of them are perfect the way he wants to be. So he keeps breaking them down to their elements and remaking them. Like, I'm gonna need that flesh I gave you for a different body. And the artwork is very Phyrexian. This was most likely once like a regular-ish human who has been modified so much after coming out of the vats. That's cool, man. All right, what's next? Next, we've got Breaches, Brazen Plunderer. One red and three for a 3-3 three, three goblin pirate legend. He's got Menace. Whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponent, exile the top card of each of those opponent's libraries. You may play those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though we're mana of any color to cast those spells. All right, that's fun. You literally get to plunder your opponent's decks. I dig that, and he looks great. He looks awesome. He looks pretty beefcake. All right, let's move on. Oh, foil undergrowth stadium. Can't complain about getting one of the good lands from this set. So, flavor text says to get to Valor's Reach, competitors must first make a name for themselves in the smaller arenas. And that would be this undergrowth stadium. So this is somewhere down, I guess, in like lower in the plain in some foresty, swampy kind of area. And it's a battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. So in commander, it's just straight up amazing. And taps for a black or a green. Pretty good land. And the artwork looks great. I like this little arena. It's funky that you've got a world where they're focused on all these different arenas and like moving your way up through the ranks. I dig that as a concept. Moving on, we have a... Extended bordered flesh bag marauder. All right, I mean, it's a card. I feel like eh, it's not, not that exciting, especially after the undergrowth stadium, but whatever. One black and two for a three one zombie warrior. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. You can tell what this guy was made out of, right? I don't even need to tell you, you guys know. You guys know. All right, All right let's move on. Hey, extended border rings a bright heart. Now that's what I'm talking about. This is an awesome artifact. Three to put out. Whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay two. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. This is fantastic. There's so many awesome abilities to like that you can copy with this. Sweet, sweet card. And I love the artwork. You've got like this darkened kind of night sky. And even the hands are darkened, but the rings themselves grow, grow, <laughs> glow very, very brightly. It's like, have they just been pulled from the flames? Are they somehow drawing energy from the flames? It's such an inviting piece of artwork. I dig it. It actually kind of gives me a little bit of a Lord of the Rings style vibe to it. Very much 
very much enjoy. Hey, cool. Look at that, man. These etched foils look pretty nice. I mean, yes, they do have the Becky let's go to the disco nail polish kind of finish, but at the same time, they look pretty solid. Look at that, man. That's a good look. It's weird how these little blumps stop a little bit up here, but whatever. Anyways, Rayov Master Smith, one white and one red for a 2 2 legendary dwarf artificer. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, that creature gains double strike until end of turn. Ooh, there's always room for improvement. Oh, I think I read a little flavor blurb about this guy, where basically he was a struggling smith, right? He was incredibly talented, but he had no recognition. So he essentially designed an incredibly complicated set of tools that go into a gauntlet like this. And then after failing to sell them, what he did was he released the blueprints to them to everybody. He basically made the designs for his work free to be like compiled together by anybody. However, nobody else actually had the skill to make these devices. So he's the only place you can go to to get this. So essentially releasing the blueprints made him famous and he was able to leverage that into a position of him being now a very well-respected master smith. And I like that. That's cool. The artwork looks really solid. You've got him standing there holding out this like newly crafted gear. He's got his little magical gauntlet with the tools or whatever. I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of Kaladesh and their energy and technology because it feels a little too close to real world earth in some ways, you know what I mean? But uh, overall, I definitely dig this card. What do we got next? Ooh, Rakdos. Wait a minute, what's wrong with your border? Oh my God. Look at that, he's so offset. That's not damage to the card, that's the alignment dot. Yeah, that is. That's literally the alignment dot. Look at how off kilter this is. That's that's frustrating, I have to admit. You know? I don't like I don't like it get when you get cards like like this is the kind of misprint where it's obvious there's something wrong with the card, but there's no additional value to a misprint collector, so it's just a poorer quality card. And this is an etched mythic rare. Ultimately, that's not the best feel, but it's still tax deductible, son. Two, <laughs> two red and two black for a 6-6 six, six legendary demon. You can't cast spells unless an opponent lost life this turn. Flying and trample. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So this is Rakdos. He is the king of the Rakdos guild, the leader of the guild on Ravnica. Not too shabby, looking very impressive, and the card definitely feels pretty demonic. So overall, good flavor tie together. Then we've got, hey, it's Obeka, an etched Obeka. Mmm, very nice. And she has much better centering. Excellent. One red, one black, one blue, and one for a 3-4 legendary ogre wizard. She taps to say the players whose turn it is may end the turn. And the flavor text says, I'm bored with now. I actually did a video specifically dedicated to this character because I think the idea of a time mage who has no level of finesse and doesn't care about the impacts of their time magic and just does it in a rage, a rage and smashy filled style way is really cool. So Hobeka is a really cool card to me. And honestly, this looks gorgeous. And finishing it off, we have a foil horror token and a foil dragon token. Not too shabby. You got a giant Phyrexian horror. This token, if I'm not mistaken, was on the, what's the card? Is it Phyrexian? Rebirth? I don't remember the name of the card, but there is a white cast uh, sorcery that destroys all creatures in play and then makes you an XX horror like this. So there's that. And then you've got a 2-2 flying dragon token that has fire breathing. So one red gives it plus one power. And that would be a dragon egg token, right? So overall, I mean, dude, like if you talk about the good cards out of the pack, like look, look at this is a good pack. It, doesn't this feel like a, doesn't this feel like a really good pack? I gotta say, I'm very pleased with it. All right, my friends, leave your tax deductible comments below. My thanks to all Canada Revenue agents who have come by to watch this 100% verified and confirmed. I have the legal documents to prove it transaction. Thanks for coming by, everybody, and I'll see you for tonight's live stream.